Lots of aces back on the mound. I got four best bets for you. Let's get after it. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. Major League Baseball bets for April 5th. I am ready to roll. We got four more of them for you. Uh, we're going to go over our bets recap in a second, but before we do, please hit that like button. It really helps us out. And also, leave a comment. You guys crushed it a couple days ago, and uh, it really helped the algorithm, and it was just awesome to see. So thank you guys for the support. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We're having a ton of fun here giving out NBA bets, MLB bets, all of it. So, um, And by the way, speaking of NBA bets, we are not going to have a full NBA video for Wednesday, April 5th, but I will do a YouTube short. And uh, you'll get some bets out, so don't worry about it. We just have life and technical issues, so uh, we will not be getting that that video out. So that's all I got. I love baseball. Every single day I get to wake up to it. So let's dive into the bets recap from yesterday. We went 3-2. and two. We started out hot, a nice 3-0. and oh, But Pavetta over 5.5 Ks, he got that in the fourth inning, but then never got another K again, so he ended with six. Uh, the one-unit money line parlay, I knew I put that one unit on the wrong bet. But uh, Astros and Guardians, how about both of them losing? Yeah, breaking news, Moneyline parlays are not as easy in baseball as they are in the NBA. But uh, that was a rough one. Astros have lost the Tigers twice now in a row. Uh, Rays team total over four and a half. They got it done and blew up in the end of the game and ended up with 10 runs. Uh, the Rockies money line, we took a chance at plus 225. They were down 2-0 in that game and had the bases loaded, nobody out, and got no runs in that inning. I knew we were screwed after that. So I don't know what they lost by, maybe 5-2. to two. Uh, And then the Phillies money line, nice, nice bet that we added today. Uh, Phillies had not won all season long in baseball. That doesn't happen, especially for a good team like the Phillies. They got it done against the number five starter in the Yankees. Nice plus 135 win. Unfortunately, because of that one unit loss, we didn't win that much today, but uh, it was a good day. We are now 18, sorry, 16 and 12, up 1.99 units. And we're probably about a week away before I start making every bet one unit and then the, the plays of the day, maybe one and a half, two units. But right now we're still at a half unit. But I do have a play of the day today for a unit. And with all that said, let's dive right into the bets. All right, here we go. Bet number one, Rays at Nationals. Rays money line minus 245. Nationals money line plus 205. Over under of eight runs in this game. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is the biggest discrepancy in starting pitchers on the card. And it might be all season. I mean, we have Shane McClanahan on the mound for the Rays. A Cy Young candidate as elite as it gets, a lefty, versus Patrick Corbin. You may remember us talking about Patrick Corbin uh, when he first played on opening day. He is absolutely horrendous, but he keeps pitching because uh, he has a big contract, and he has to. They can't put him in the minors. Uh, McClanahan first. Like I said, he's a Cy Young candidate. He had a 2.5 ERA last year, 3 expected ERA, uh, only 20% hard contact rate. That's top 5% in the league. This guy is so good and a 30% K rate to go with it, as elite as it gets, guys. Uh, he started out the season six innings, no runs, and struck out six against the Tigers. And uh, Patrick Corbin on the other side, uh, awful, just awful. I, I could break it all down. He had a 6.3 ERA. Um, he lasted three innings in the first game, walked three guys, couldn't even make it to the fourth. Guys, he's so freaking bad. It's unbelievable. So my best bet in this game is the Tampa Bay Rays minus one and a half on the run line. I saw this on DraftKings at minus 135. I'd probably go up to minus 140, 145. This is getting really uh, juicy. I don't I don't like going up much higher than 135, 140 on bets. Um, but there's just no other way to bet this. There's There really isn't. I would expect like a 7-2, to 6-2 to two kind of win by the Rays. If you want to get really like risky, you could go minus 2.5 runs. You're going to get plus money on that. Uh, but minus 1.5 and, and minus 135. Otherwise, maybe Tampa Bay... You know, just money line if you want to put it in a parlay. But Tampa Bay, I would be shocked if they lost this game. McClanahan versus Corbin, you got to be kidding me. One of the top five pitchers in the game versus a bottom three pitcher in the game. So I love the Rays minus one and a half in this game. Lock that in for bet number one, and that's only a half unit, by the way. And we're going to go to bet number two. All right, here we go. Game number two, Giants at White Sox. White Sox money line minus 135. Giants money line plus 115. Over under is seven and a half runs. Uh, the Giants just put a beat down on the White Sox a couple days ago when we bet the White Sox, unfortunately. Kopech was horrendous. Couldn't find the strike zone. It was getting hit all over the place. Uh, but it's a little different story this game. We have two stud pitchers on the mound. This is a day of elite aces coming back after their first start. 
Uh, Dylan Cease on the mound for the White Sox. We will talk about him all year long. He was my bet to win the American League Cy Young, and so far, so good. 2.2 ERA last year, 30% K rate, 99th percentile in hard contact rate allowed. He only allows 18% hard contact. I mean, it is so hard to barrel this guy up. Uh, he went 6.1 innings against the defending champion Astros and gave up one run and struck out 10 of those guys. And those guys don't strike out a lot. Uh, Logan Webb on the other side. He's a stud pitcher. He's the ace for the Giants. Not as good as Cease, but still a really good pitcher. Uh, he struggled a little bit in the opener versus the Yankees. Gave up four earned runs, but he still struck out 12 Yankees players. So um, I'm not going to focus too much on Logan Webb because it has nothing to do with my bet. My best bet for this game is the Giants team total under three and a half at minus 114. Um, you know, if you want to go total total seven and a half under, I almost did that. But you know what? I want to focus on just Dylan Cease versus this offense. Um, Giants, Giants have already gotten shut out twice, guys. They played four games, and they've gotten shut out two of those four games. Now they're going against maybe the best pitcher in the major leagues. I just love this three and a half. I'm surprised it's not like minus 160 or 150 at under three and a half. Um, but now, you know, I just see, think Cease is going to limit these guys. These guys are not that good. Don't be confused by the 12 runs or whatever they put up last game. Um, that was just Kopech being terrible, and then they threw some bad bullpen arms at him because the game was out of reach. So um, it's Dylan Cease. Last time the Giants faced an elite pitcher was Garrett Cole on opening day, and they got shut out. It's another elite pitcher. As long as the, the Sox bullpen does not ruin this, you know, I love this bet under three and a half. If you want to go over, under probably one and a half on the first five team total for Giants, you could do that too. I didn't see any lines available when I did this video, so um, that's why I'm going to take the under three and a half for the Giants team total as my best bet. Let's move on to the next bet and one unit play. All right, here we go. Bet number three, and it's the play of the day. Twins versus the Marlins. Twins money line minus 115. Miami Fishies, money line, minus 105, over-under of 7. This is another good pitching matchup, guys. We got Pablo Lopez on the mound for the Twins, the ace for this team, versus Jesus Lazardo for the Marlins. Uh, let's talk Lopez real quick. Um, he went five inning, 5.1 innings, gave up zero runs, and struck out eight against the Royals in game one. Uh, I just expect him to have a big year this year. He was kind of a sleeper, Cy Young. I don't think he's going to get to that point this year. Uh, but he did have a, he was elite two years ago. Last year was not bad. It was just a so-so year. And I expect him to have a great year this year. And it's already started with opening day. He's going against the Marlins who strike out a ton. And we're going to get into that in a second. Uh, Jesus Lazardo, he's starting to live up to the hype too that we had when he was on the A's before he got traded. Uh, he had a 30% K rate last year. I mean, that's pretty freaking impressive. Uh, 3.32 ERA and a 3.22 expected ERA. So that's pretty crazy. His expected was actually lower. Uh, he went 5.2 innings, gave up zero runs also, just like Pablo Lopez, and struck out five against the Mets. So both of these guys, they've, pl they've pitched a total of 11 innings and given up zero runs. I mean, this game has underwritten all over. But I don't have a bet on that. If I had to, I'd probably go under in the first five. I think it's like three and a half in this game. Uh, but that's not my best bet. One unit play of the day, and you might have to get it quick before it goes up, is Pablo Lopez over five and a half strikeouts. I saw it at minus 125 on DraftKings. Some books might have it at six and a half at plus money. I don't mind that either as long as you're getting good plus money value on that. But I will gladly take over five and a half for the full unit play. All five opposing starting pitchers against the Marlins this year have struck out six or more. I expect him to make it a six straight. The Marlins have also struck out the most in the major league so far. It's a small sample. I'm not. That's not the reason. The only reason I'm betting it, but they have some guys that strike out. They're striking out a 30% clip right now against right-handed pitching. So, all that said, they weren't very good last year against strikeout with strikeouts either. So, um, you know, it's nothing new. I expect this team to struggle against Pablo Lopez, and I definitely think he gets six. He could get seven or eight in this game, to be honest, pretty easily. So. I like Lopez over five and a half Ks minus 125 as my one unit play of the day. Now let's move on to game number four. All right, here we go. The fourth and final bet, the Angels versus my Mariners. Angels money line minus 145, Mariners money line plus 125, over under of seven runs. As you can tell, I changed hats because um, I'm embarrassed with what I'm about to say and it hurts me. And I don't want to have my Mariners hat hear this, but... Uh, We'll get into it in just a second. Um, Shohei Otani's on the mound. We all know what Shohei is all about. He's just absolutely elite. In 38 innings pitched against the Mariners, he has a 
1.66 ERA, better than any other team in the division. Um, I hate watching him pitch against us. It sucks. Uh, he has 48 Ks in those 38 innings. 2.33 ERA last year, 2.78 expected ERA. This guy's a stud, 33% K rate. He is as good as it gets. Hitting, pitching, he's unbelievable. A generational player, as you guys all know. And who gets to face him? Chris Flexen, a guy who is going to be our bullpen this year, but he gets to start because Robbie Ray got hurt. Um, you know, he's been decent against the Angels in his career. He's got a 3.27 ERA. He's a career four ERA guy, just a decent, you know, a guy, nothing special. Um, low K percentage though at like 16%. So he's not a strikeout pitcher. Um, I just think this matchup is just brutal guys. There, I'm surprised the angels are only minus one forty five to be honest with you, but my best bet in this game is the angels minus a half a run in the, in the first five innings at minus minus one ten. I am getting minus one ten value for Shohei to pitch better than Chris Flexen. That's mind boggling to me. Obviously, I'm counting on the Angels' bats to get, you know, a run or two and at least get more than the Mariners do. Um, but, you know, I hate betting against the Mariners. And uh, there's a chance that I could win this bet. The Mariners still come back and win at the end of the game. But uh, I have to do it. It's just too good a value, and I have to give you guys the best bets that I see. So it's going to be Angels minus a half a run in the first five innings at minus 110 as my fourth and final bet. Now let's check out that bets recap page. All right, here we go. Rays minus one and a half at minus 135. Again, I wouldn't take that much higher than like 145 probably on the one and a half run line. Giants team total under three and a half at minus 114 going against the man Dylan Cease. And then the play of the day, one unit, Pablo Lopez over five and a half Ks at minus 125. Um, if you get six and a half at plus money, I like it as a regular bet. I, you know, I probably wouldn't put my full unit, you know, whatever you guys are doing. Maybe you're already putting a unit on bets or and doubling it. I'm not sure, but uh, just wanted to let you know. And then Angels minus a half a run in the first five versus my Mariners at minus 110. So that's where we're at. Those are our four bets. And uh, we haven't gone a day yet without adding a bet in the pinned comments. So be sure to check on that because you know it's coming again tomorrow. Thank you guys for all the support and for listening to these videos. Hit and like and leave that comment. Appreciate it. Appreciate all of it. Um, again, no NBA video. We're going to have a YouTube short out for that. And uh, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.